Chapter 1 Xavier Mace You are listening at NovelFull.audio. 2 weeks. 14 whole days and nights. That was exactly how long Xavier Mace had been patrolling the grounds of this strange forest. At first, Xavier had nothing to worry about. He was a soldier above all things, so his training had prepared him for any eventualities and unforeseeable circumstances such as this. In fact, Xavier welcomed situations like this for many reasons, primarily because it gave him the perfect opportunity to make ample use of his training, but also because he was hardwired for combat and overcoming difficulties. A part of him actually itched for adversity, but none came. For a man of action, the worst thing that could happen to him was nothing. Unfortunately for him, his stay in the strange forest had been characterized by the one thing he hated the most. Inaction. The first few days had been spent waiting for an ambush that never came. Cut off from the rest of his squad, as the only soldier from his platoon in the forest, Xavier Mace went through the forest on high alert. He combed the woods for booby traps, he scoured the ground for traces of any kind of enemy or friendly activity, he even searched for possible landmines, but he never found any. Not even the slightest hint. Anyone would take this as good news. But not Xavier Mace. He grew increasingly cautious over the next couple of days and often went many times without sleep. By the end of the first week, Xavier's worry was augmented by a very disturbing observation. He had discovered that the forest was a strange place. Xavier was well aware of his mental state and psychological condition. He factored all this in and anticipated in advance the effects that came along with it. But even he knew that his mind wasn't playing with him. The forest he had stumbled into was a very strange place. Xavier mulled over the events of the past few days, as well as the period that had preceded his arrival here. His original thought had been a very absurd one, he thought that for some odd reason, he had been abandoned by his platoon. The thought didn't seem very likely or plausible, but given how it had happened, Xavier knew that everything pointed towards that very fact. Xavier belonged to a top secret and confidential part of the army. They were the shadows in the dark that executed off the book's missions. They were the division that consisted of the very elite. They were the special forces, the creme of the creme of the armed forces. Of course there were contingencies for situations like this, his training dictated that if in any event he found himself separated from his squad, the first thing to do was to establish communications. This was the first thing that Xavier had done, but he discovered much to his chagrin that there wasn't even the slightest signal. It was extremely odd because the communication system handed to the special forces unit was state of the art. It was known to bypass all scrambling devices, it could even operate fully in the event of an electromagnetic pulse being detonated. This was the beginning of what sparked Xavier's suspicion of the forest. The rest of what followed astounded him even more. Xavier was a very observant man, even before his army training. So, it didn't escape his attention that the irregular behavior and characteristics of the animals and even the plants were out of the norm. A closer look at the wildlife told him that they all had strangely peculiar skills. It was uncanny. This can't be. Xavier thought to himself as he trailed a rabbit through the forest on one of his hunting expeditions. It's almost like this is magic. He wasn't typically a TV person, but even he couldn't deny that the reality he was actively experiencing at the moment was similar to some of the magical shows he had seen on sets. The bunny he had been chasing had hopped gracefully into a burrow in the woods. He tried to poke his head through but was repelled by an invisible barrier. He ended up doubling over and crashed the base of his skull into a tree trunk behind him. The pain that followed was intense. Blood immediately began to spill as stars danced before his eyes. It took the whole of his will and his manliness to not cry out. He winced and gritted his teeth as he endured the pain. Xavier looked in the direction where his little friend had sought refuge and snarled, I am going to get you, you little punk. Almost as though it heard him, the rabbit chose that exact moment to poke its head out of its hiding place and shook its head like it was disappointed at Xavier. The estranged member of the special forces was flabbergasted. 
Is this rabbit actually mocking me? Xavier thought in disbelief. It certainly seemed that way. His wounded pride took over him and he lounged himself at it again, this time with calculated aggression. The rabbit didn't even move a bit. Halfway in the air, Xavier smiled as he congratulated himself, that's right little rabbit. Be afraid. But his victory was short dot lived. He didn't realize that he was about to be swept off by an invading force of nature. Xavier was so occupied with his victory that he didn't see the huge branch of the tree, in which the rabbit was hiding, rushing towards him with full speed. By the time he saw it in the corner of his eye, it was already too late for him to bring himself to a halt. It slammed into his sides and sent him flying in the opposite direction. Lying on his back on the rich loamy soil of the forest, completely flustered and shocked, Xavier convinced himself finally that this was in fact a different forest. As his mind began to deliberate on the fact that he had left his own world and was now in a different realm, the mechanical voice of the system's voice spoke in his head. Major Xavier Mace, System Reporting for Duty Forgetting the pain, Xavier jumped up at the sound of the voice. His eyes glossing over his surroundings, he barked, Who's there? Identify yourself this instant. The automated voice came again, This is the military system Alpha Centauri reporting for duty. Please confirm your identity major. Xavier was still dazed and very unsure of what was happening right now. He had perfect situational awareness and wasn't almost always on guard, but this had taken him unawares completely. Military system. He thought aloud in disbelief. Was it really speaking to him? It answered him immediately. Affirmative, welcome to this world Major Xavier Mace. Xavier was about to protest but he immediately remembered that he was in fact in a very strange land where weird things had already been observed. Still, it took him a while to fully come to terms with the fact that this was all in fact very real. The system began to speak again, Major, the system has conducted a thorough assessment of your vitals and the results are as thus, blood pressure, normal. Slight concussion detected. Elevated heart rate detected. You may choose to stay here or continue with your mission. Xavier listened with rapt attention. Well, this certainly just got real. He thought. Chapter 2 Imperil You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Night time was always the most dangerous time of the day. No matter how Xavier looked at it, the night always came with its own horrors and dangers. From the creepy crawlies that crept around on the forest's floor, to that ever-present danger of a nocturnal predator showing up unannounced, night time was fraught with so many dangers that Xavier couldn't possibly hope to envision them all. There was also the disturbing fact that the forest and the creatures seemed to have a mind of their own. Everything about them was off. His recent experience had taught him not to underestimate any creature here, he had learnt the hard way that even a tree could turn against him here at any moment. All things considered, falling asleep was the hardest task to accomplish here. Xavier hated the idea of being unconscious in a forest as strange as this one, he didn't like it, but he had no other option but to turn into an insomniac. If an ordinary bunny could have caused him so much trouble, it baffled him to even consider what an actual beast would be like here. He shuddered as he thought of it. I better find a high ground and camp for the night. He thought prudently to himself, there's no telling what manner of danger stalks these woods in the night time. With a grim look on his face, and his mind anticipating the kind of terrors that flew about at night, Xavier crept along the surface of the forest in search of the perfect place to camp for the night. There were no caves or high grounds, neither was there any ranger's cabin in which he could take refuge. As he delved deeper and deeper into the heart of the jungle with dusk on his heels, Xavier soon began to become disenchanted. He was about to give up entirely when he chanced upon one of nature's wonders. His eyes widened as he took in the wondrous sight. Right before his very eyes, located in the womb of the forest and in the heart of the jungle was a great oak tree that spanned several meters wide with an impressive height of at least thirty foot. The joy in his heart knew no bounds. The major was more than thankful for the provision. 
Xavier Mace wasted no time and immediately got to climbing. Ascending a tree such as this would have proven to be the real definition of a Herculean task, but Xavier was more than up to it. Amidst grunts and heavy breathing, Xavier managed to get to the top of the tree just in time for nightfall. After securing his position, Xavier settled down to the first sleep he had had in several days. He soon dozed off as the days of accumulated took over him in one heavy wave. Although Xavier had been asleep for more than four hours, he felt like it had only been a few minutes since he last closed his eyes. He awoke out of his slumber with a jolt and he couldn't explain why. Years on training had honed his sixth sense so he knew that danger must be lurking. His suspicions were confirmed almost immediately as the military system's voice dropped into his mind with a warning, Major Xavier Mace, please be advised, the system has picked up on a horde of fully wildlife approaching from the rear end. Precaution is advised. The cold automated voice of the system betrayed no emotion, but there was no missing the sense of urgency in its message. Xavier cursed inwardly, yeah no shit. The hard training which Xavier had endured for so many years had gifted him all the necessary tools to survive. He had excellent instincts and in addition to that, he was also a seasoned combatant who had seen action. But in spite of all these, Xavier was more than grateful that the system had alerted him on time. The Major didn't dare make any sudden movements. He wasn't up to date on wild animals trivia, but he knew fully well that most nocturnal predators that hunted at night had excellent night vision and acute sense of hearing. As if those traits weren't crazy enough, he knew that they also had excellent sense of smell. Most, if not all predators could sniff out their prey from a long way off. It was almost impossible for one to slip by unnoticed. So, without making the slightest sound, Xavier slowly sat upright. He carefully reached into his backpack and pulled out the one advantage he had right now. A state-of-the-art N.20 night vision goggle. This particular piece of equipment had a range of about 200 meters or more. No matter the blackness of the night, it could detect radiation and discern varying levels of heat signatures. Xavier took his time to set it up as quietly as he could, then, he crouched down on his belly and peered hard at the ground. He was wide alert and all his senses were awake. It turned out that he didn't need to look too far, Xavier soon found what he was looking for. Right at the base of the very tree he was currently hiding, the lithe impressive figure of a muscular cheetah was circling the trunk of the tree. Xavier was not excited about his new visitor at all. He was well aware of the fact that the animals of this forest weren't ordinary. His suspicions were confirmed when he noticed that the cheetah displayed its intelligence by the way and manner it moved. Its movements were sporadic, it moved in a zigzag-like motion in order to keep its position hidden. This isn't good. He thought, this creature is obviously intelligent. His brief but interesting encounter with the rabbit had taught him just a small fraction of what he needed to know about the creatures of this forest. Xavier wasn't looking forward to engaging the cheetah at all. So, he began to mentally prepare himself for the altercation ahead. His sharp mind began to take into account the environmental factors that could play to his advantage. Apart from the silvery rays of the glowing moon that filtered down from the towering canopy trees to the forest's floor, there was little or no visibility. Xavier couldn't count on the moonlight more than he could count on his own sight. As nature intended, the cheetah had all the advantage. What Xavier was grateful for at the time was the fact that the air was still there was no breeze. And because there was no breeze, the cheetah couldn't pick up his scent. He was still thinking that when the air around him shifted, and with it came a slight breeze from the north. Damn it, he cursed inwardly. Can't a guy catch a break around here? He silently prayed that the cheetah wouldn't pick up his scent, but alas, it was futile. As soon as the wind blew, the cheetah stopped prowling and immediately looked up at the tree. Xavier could have sworn that the creature smiled as if to say, I've got you. Given his present situation, it was difficult to maintain his cool. And yet, Xavier knew that it was imperative that he stayed calm. A lot was riding on him maintaining his cool. He took a deep breath and reanalyzed the situation. 
Dot, the cheetah is moving a lot. But why? Could it be that it is trying to avoid being seen because it could actually suffer real damage from a long-range attack? A light bulb came on in his head immediately. Chapter 3 The Mission You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Xavier began to consider an all-dot-out assault. He was going to take full advantage of the distance between them and pump the cheetah full of lead bullets. A satisfying grin played out on his face as he played out the scenario in his head. The cheetah would definitely suffer a mortal wound from a long-range attack. So, not wanting it to be aware of the fact that he had spotted it, he slowly took out his pistol and carefully aimed at the cheetah beneath him. He was an excellent shot so the odds were in his favor. As Xavier honed in on his target, he quickly discovered a problem that he had failed to factor in in his original plan. Obstacles The cheetah was cleverly moving around to evade detection, and because of that, it was constantly under the cover of the tens of branches that spread out from the tree. It was using Xavier's very own advantage against him. BL.net, shit. Are cheetahs supposed to be this clever? He tried some more, but he could never seem to get a clear shot. It kept moving and he kept adjusting but he still couldn't get a clear line of shot. The cheetah wasn't aware of just how effective its evasive maneuvers were in keeping itself out of Xavier's shooting range. The flustered Xavier began to perspire. He needed another plan, fast. His only advantage right now was the distance between them, if the cheetah decided to bridge the gap between them, Xavier knew that he wouldn't be too far from being its dinner. Damn it, he cursed again. If he decided to get a move on the cheetah by coming down from the tree to engage it, it would almost certainly be suicide. It was widely known that cheetahs could be diabolically fast. Factor that in with the fact that the creatures of the forest were already strange, and it would turn out to be a sure recipe for disaster. Xavier shook off the chilling thought and focused on making his next plans. How do I get out of this? His subconscious got to work, and another idea came up in his head. It was a high-risk strategy, but it was sure to rid him of the cheetah if it was successful. Xavier drew a deep breath and ran over the plan once again in his mind. The new plan was simple. It involved him luring the cheetah in and killing it at close range. But in order to do that, he had to do the worst thing he could think of in this situation, he had to play dead. It was his hope that the cheetah would drop its guard once it saw his motionless body. Then with his pistol by his side, cocked and ready for action, he would then blow its brains out once it was close enough. It was a dangerous plan, but it was all he could work with at the moment. Xavier wasn't a praying guy, but at that moment, he prayed with the whole of his heart that his plan would go on without any hiccups. If anything happened to go wrong, if there was even the slightest miscalculation or deviation from the plan, Xavier shuddered just thinking about it. Just as he had expected, the cheetah took the bait. It crept up the tree with the chilling stealth one would expect from an apex predator. It never took its eyes off of Xavier's seemingly lifeless body. Xavier was stunned at just how silent it was. Aside from the occasional rustling of the leaves where its body touched, it was almost impossible to hear it coming. Its paws made not noise at all as it came in contact with the bark of the tree. It even managed to regulate its breathing to minimize the chances of it being spotted. Every second that passed seemed like an eternity to Xavier. What he was doing was unnatural. His mind seemed to get the memo as the entirety of his being screamed at him to run. It took every fiber of sheer will to hold on to his britches. He held his breath as he waited. The cheetah soon closed in on him. It was so close to Xavier that he could practically smell it. Its lithe but agile form was slightly visible in the dark. Like a vulture hovering over its prey, the cheetah circled round about Xavier's still body. Most creatures wouldn't even bother with the theatrics, without wasting time, they would have delved right into feeding on the still body. But the cheetah was a very intelligent creature. Even while it seemed like dinner was served, it still took precautions. Xavier could do nothing but wait, hope and pray. 
finally it stopped its menacing encircling movements and brought its nose close to Xavier's torso. It took one sniff, and then inched closer to Xavier's neck and sniffed again. Xavier didn't even dare to breathe. His heartbeat was so loud, he thought the cheetah was surely hearing it. Then finally, the moment came. As the cheetah opened its wide mouth to take a huge chunk of his throat, Xavier made his move. Quick as lightning, and with deft precision, he shoved the cold steel end of the gun into its mouth and blasted it into oblivion. The cheetah never realized what had happened. It was dead long before it slumped. As Xavier lay in the pool of the cheetah's blood and surrounded by its entrails, the military system's voice came amidst the silence, Congratulations Major Xavier Mace. You have successfully hunted and destroyed a level 2 cheetah. Xavier didn't even know what to think of the congratulatory message. He couldn't believe that the intelligent creature he had just battled was just a level 2 beast. It boggled him to think what a higher level animal would be like. The system spoke again. Major, on account of your recent achievements, you have been awarded 20 whole points. Consequently, your experience value has been increased by 5 points. Xavier, who had been lying still all this while rose up hastily to grab the new information. He couldn't believe that a seasoned and battle-tested soldier like himself was playing for points. If he hadn't heard the system himself, he never would have believed it. Totally ignorant of his thoughts and feelings, the system prattled on as it doled out a new set of instructions, your next mission is to decapitate the carcass. Take the head of the cheetah, head to the nearest underground exchange center and sell it off. Xavier listened to the morbid instructions of the system. It all seemed a tad bit theatrical to him. Nevertheless, he had accepted the mission. Therefore, as a soldier, he had to follow every order, no matter how morbid, till he finished his mission. Shrugging his shoulders, he took out an army knife and began to sever the head of the carcass from the rest of its body. It was nasty business. He half-heartedly finished it all the way through and prepared for the next leg of the mission. As he was getting ready to move, the system provided him with a detailed coordinates of his next location. Please be advised, you are some 40 clicks away from your next mission point. You are to stay and maintain a course of north 40 degrees east as the crow flies. Xavier had no trouble with navigation. He estimated that given his current speed and the distance between him and his next mission, he figured he would arrive at his destination in less than a day. He saddled up and prepared for whatever lay ahead of him. Chapter 4 Unfriendly Glares You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. The directions given to Xavier Mace were detailed enough. He had no issues whatsoever navigating his way towards the location he had been instructed to head to. The forest had been a real nightmare and he was only too glad to leave it behind him. He wouldn't be in a hurry to forget his experience there at all. In so many ways, the forest was more dangerous than any enemy he had encountered in the past. The terrain itself contained more mystery than the average forest, and Xavier left with more questions than answers. His prediction was spot on. As he had envisaged, it had taken him half a day to trek from the forest to the shanty town before him. The damn system better give me some more points for this. He quickly put aside his unprofessional thoughts and focused on the shanty town that appeared before him. It lacked the luster and brilliance that was affiliated with major cities. At first sight, it looked very bland. It lacked the welcoming spirit of a traveler's towns. In fact, he could almost certainly detect a subtle tinge of hostility in the air. Xavier instantly went into alert mode. As he entered the gate and made his way through the streets of the town, Xavier made a point to not rouse any kind of attention. He prudently decided to keep his head down and mind his business. Anything outside of his mission was definitely not worth indulging. His intentions were noble, but it seemed like the town's people had other plans. Everywhere he went, he found himself on the receiving end of multiple unfriendly glares from extremely unfriendly faces. Xavier was stunned. He struggled to fathom the reason behind the vitriolic stares but he came up short every single time. 
The only logical explanation was that the people of this town hated strangers and instantly recognized them. In addition to their strange attributes, Xavier noticed that they were all dressed in a similar fashion. The people of this strange town were all dressed in vintage clothes. The kind that was typical of the 12th century Europeans. Xavier didn't know if it was a costume day or anything he didn't bother to disturb himself with any of the details. As he passed a salon on the street, he caught a glimpse of his reflection in the mirror and was taken aback by who he saw staring back at him. No wonder they were all staring at him like he was an alien or something. Dressed head to toe in regular combat attire, he stood out amongst the crowd like a sore thumb. Head to toe, Xavier was clad in the traditional black gear that was typical of members of the special forces. His black beret, black combat boots, black Kevlar vest all casted him in a very strange light. Xavier finally got a grip on the situation at hand. He approached a group of men huddled together in corner of the street and tried to initiate a conversation. Good day chaps. Could I bother you with some questions? The blank irritated looks on their faces told him that he had better be on his way. He took the hint and abandoned his objective with them. Further down the road, he chanced on a couple young lads who seemed reasonable. He called out to them in the same vein and asked the same question. They retorted with a string of incomprehensible words and in a very hostile manner. Xavier soon realized the problem. It appeared that the dialect here was completely different. Xavier sighed aloud. This is turning into a real issue. How can I navigate such a hostile environment with an insurmountable obstacle like a language barrier? It was indeed a problem. For without effective communication with the locals of this town, it would be extremely difficult to accomplish his mission here. Major Mace. He had completely forgotten that the military system was present with him. So he was shocked out of his boots when its voice came with an uncanny suddenness. Be advised, the local dialect has been programmed into the microchip installed in your cerebral cortex. To activate, simply say aloud. Language system activate. Xavier didn't think that he would ever get used to the military system speaking to him. Still, he took note of everything it said. He couldn't deny that it had been of tremendous help to him in recent times. So, without wasting time, he took a deep breath and and uttered the magic words. Language system activate. There had been no spark or glowing or whirring noises that showed that physically showed that it had been activated. But although Xavier didn't know it, millions of neurons in his brain had downloaded trillions of terabytes of data from the bionic chip, all in under 1.87 seconds. He waited for a signal, but when none came, he proceeded to test it himself. The perfect opportunity presented itself at that very moment. An elderly woman happened to come around the corner. Xavier approached her with his question lined up in his head, Good day ancient one, could you please point me in the direction of the pawn shop? I would like to make a trade please. It was Xavier's hope that since the woman was elderly, she might be more cultured than the others whom he had met. She looked at him with a blank expression. Just when Xavier began to doubt the success of the language system, the old woman surprised him with her reply, You uncouth bastard. Xavier was taken aback. It was rare to see an uncultured elderly woman, but it was also because he hadn't done anything to deserve the vicious verbal assault. She didn't stop there. She dressed him down for about three minutes before finally giving him brash directions to the place he was looking for. Stunned by the hostility, Xavier made his way towards the location. After navigating through a series of turns, he finally arrived at the underground chamber. It was wild place where exchanges and transactions were made between parties. Xavier thought that he had suffered enough of the strange stairs above ground, but right here, in the midst of a cavern full of unsavory characters, Xavier felt like every pair of eyes in the room was centered on him. They all looked at him differently. Unbothered, Xavier waddled through the throng of glaring eyes looking at him and arrived on the counter. There he set down the cheetah's head at the desk of the receptionist. The receptionist was a comely girl who looked like she was in her early or mid-twenties. 
Xavier reckoned she must have seen a lot in all of her time working here. And yet, the look of surprise that registered on her face upon seeing the severed cheetah's bloody head was priceless. She was so lost for words that she remained mute for almost an entire minute. She stared and stared at the decapitated head that had been dumped in front of her by the stranger. Her face went white as though she had seen a ghost. Within a short period of time, she somehow managed to get a hold of herself and feigned indifference. But it was already too late. Xavier had seen what he had seen and he took note of it. Her reaction told him all that he needed to know about how he would go about the deal. Chapter 5 Provoke You are listening at NovelFull.audio The receptionist finally peeled her eyes away from the worrisome sight on the counter and focused on the stranger before her. Everything about the young man before her was strange. It wasn't just his clothes or the coldness in his eyes, it was also his composure. The way he carried himself that suggested the fact that he was in control. It wasn't haughtiness, no, it was confidence. A certain confidence that was rooted in something deep. The stranger hadn't spoken a word yet, so she broke the silence with a simple greeting. Good day to you stranger. He nodded back at her. Not surprised that he wasn't much of a talker, she pushed further with a question, are you here alone or do you have any partners? He simply shook his head. From the receptionist's point of view, she saw a cold stranger who wasn't much of a talker. But it wasn't like that. Xavier's recent experience with the people of this town showed him that he was better off saying less. He knew that he would have to speak at some point in time, but he preferred to drag it out as long as he could. The receptionist wasn't just trying to make conversation, she was actually asking for his partners because she found it difficult to believe that he could pull off a feat like killing off a cheetah on his own. In these parts, men usually hunted in groups. To think that this stranger had succeeded in doing what usually took up to six men to accomplish, her imagination was running wild. Just who is this guy, she thought. Xavier was excellent at reading people and situations. In addition to his perfect situational awareness, he also possessed a remarkable degree of social intelligence. He could tell that the receptionist was having a little bit of internal conflict because of him. He knew that he had to speak up and clear the air, else, he would run the risk of being thought of as a dud. He cleared his voice and spoke in a clear strong tone. In reply to your original question, I am here alone and I am here to sell this head. His suave tone surprised her. Although she didn't voice it out, she was very much astonished by the fact that he alone had killed off the beast. So deliberated on it for a while before she decided to proceed with the transaction. Okay. We can do business. Hold on a bit while I go fetch your payment. She didn't allow Xavier to say anything before she dashed off into the back room. He was a bit surprised by how smooth the transaction was going. He had half expected a whole lot of back and forth before settling on a fair price. But needless to say that he was well pleased in the direction it was heading. He thought it a bit odd that she hadn't asked for his price, but he shrugged it off. Maybe the prices for these things were fixed in these parts. He relaxed a bit as he waited for her to return. And that was when trouble began to rear its ugly head. Ironically, it was precisely because of the ugly head that was on the receptionist's counter. The strange sight had attracted the attention of some of the unsavory characters in the tavern. Behind him, Xavier began to hear some sporadic laughter. He knew it was targeted at him, so he ignored them. They made loud comments about youths these days and how cocky they were getting. To his hearing, they joked about how the cheetah must have been already dead when he came up on it. They also made remarks about how it seemed like this guy had stolen the cheetah's head and put it on full display, just so the world could see him and applaud him. Behind him, they called him all sorts of names that was synonymous with delinquent and fraud. Through it all, Xavier said nothing. He remained silent and kept his head down. The punks were not happy with the fact that he had ignored them so blatantly. When they saw that he had stubbornly kept his back turned to them, one of them swaggered over to where he was. 
He positioned himself directly opposite Xavier and stared him for minutes on end without saying a word. Xavier refused to acknowledge his presence. He ignored him so hard that the other guy began to question his own existence. But inwardly, Xavier prayed the man would leave him alone. He didn't want to get into it right now. These people. Xavier thought to himself, what is it with these people and staring? When the uncultured swine decided he had had enough, he opened his mouth to reveal a set of crooked brown teeth and asked Xavier sarcastically, say, where did a youth like yourself get such a fine prize at? The corners of his mouth twisted into a crooked smile, and with a wicked glint in his eye, he asked him another sarcastic question, or, did you nick it? Come on tell us. We're dying to know already. Xavier remained cool as ice. He didn't say a word. He considered it beneath him to get involved with low-ranking scum whose greatest achievement was becoming a local champion. Dot also, it wasn't just that, the fact was Xavier took great pride in being a soldier. His mantra was, follow orders and complete missions. Simple. Anything outside of that didn't interest him. Not one bit. Getting into trouble was way outside of his purview. It wasn't his style at all. Also, Xavier simply didn't care. Not one bit. The other man shifted uncomfortably. This wasn't how he thought it would go down. His initial plan had been to come over here to bully the young man, and yet, he had met a cold steely youth instead of an edgy inexperienced boy. He glanced back at his friends and saw they were still laughing. He knew that he couldn't embarrass himself, so his ego took over and resorted to the tricks of the rabble rouser. Raising his voice to the highest volume, he spoke loudly to the hearing of everyone, folks. He cried at the top of his voice, take a look at this cocky lad. He looks like he is barely twenty years old, and yet, he claims to have killed a cheetah. He emphasized on the last part with as much contempt as he could muster. As a professional punk, he had mastered the art of crowd psychology. The jeering crowd was already on his side, so he pressed on, now, we all know killing a cheetah is no small feat. As he spoke, he moved around making hand gestures. But we all know that it should take at least five to ten strong men to accomplish this feat, the crowd murmured in agreement. The punk shot his finger into the air dramatically as he dropped his next fact, and yet, this punk claims to have done this all by himself. The punk's friends, and the others whose eyes were on him growled in laughter. His head swelled with pride. Glad that he had successfully turned the wave against the stranger, he looked at him from the corner of his eyes hoping to see the young man panicking. But to his uttermost surprise, he was still as cool and as suave as he was a few minutes before. He cursed underneath his breath as he thought to himself. Chapter 6 Arm Wrestle You are listening at NovelFull.audio Damn you, you cool jerk. Then, a diabolical idea came to the punk. His plan was to use Xavier's cool front to support his theory. At the top of his voice, he cried out to the rest saying, Fellas. Fellas. Do you not see that he is afraid to confront us? You all know what this means right? He paused for dramatic effect, then turned in Xavier's direction and lifted up his thick stubby finger to point at him, he is just another coward and a damn liar. The others cheered him on. They had gotten significantly bolder since Xavier had decided to keep silent. With the others now riled behind him, the chief punk glared at Xavier as he thought to himself, just wait, I am going to teach you a lesson you ungrateful bastard. Even in the midst of the growing storm around Xavier, he remained as calm as the deep waters. He waited patiently for the receptionist to bring his pay so he could leave. That was the only thing keeping him here. He didn't care about the punk or his rabble rousers. All he cared about was his mission. Anyone with less than average powers of reasoning could tell that the majority of the men in this place were egocentric. They were simple and at the same time, they were extremely fickle and prone to anger. Anything could set them off. So what happened next wasn't entirely surprising. Physically, he was intimidating. 
The middle-aged man stood at least six foot seven inches above the ground. His thick torso reminded many of the trunk of a tree. His broad hairy chest was paralleled only by that of a bear. His entire build dangerously resembled that of an executioner or a butcher. On his face was a permanent scowl that never took a day off. This was the person who stood up from behind the crowd and slowly made his way towards Xavier. Everyone knew him, and most people avoided him. So, with his eye on the stranger clad in black sitting alone at the counter, he moved through the crowd gracefully with little or no resistance towards Xavier Mace. He arrived at Xavier's table with that permanent scowl on his face and grunted to announce his presence. Xavier didn't even as much as glance in his direction. After the brief awkward silence, the tall bearded middle dot aged man stated his purpose, you and me. Arm wrestle. Now. Clearly he wasn't much of a talker. He dropped his words one at a time and refused to use any polite terms. From his own perspective, it was unmanly to speak too many words. Especially to someone like Xavier whom he considered to be weak. Naturally, Xavier ignored him. And he would have continued to do so if the system hadn't chosen that very moment to issue him a new objective. Major Mace. It began. Damn it. He cursed. Not now. Xavier wasn't completely fond of the system's tasks. And yet, here he was, in a precarious situation with the system about to give him a new mission. He knew this was no coincidence. Still, he paid rapt attention to the system's command. Be advised, your instructions at this moment is to indulge the man's request. Enter into the primitive contest of arm wrestling with man before you major. Over and out. Just as Xavier suspected, he knew that the new task would take on something of this nature. He thought of a way to circumvent this present task but he grew cold when he remembered something that had happened several weeks ago. During his first few days at the forest, the system had issued him a fresh directive. Xavier had foolishly waved it off and dismissed it casually. The end result had been greatly unfortunate for him. He almost died. It was an unforgettable experience and he was reminded of this every single time he thought of abandoning his mission. It looks like I have to do this. I surely don't want a repeat of what happened that day. He forced all reservations he had at the back of his mind and focused on the present task at hand. For the first time, Xavier looked at the figure who stood before him, and took in his physical features as well as his overall vibe. Xavier's eyes saw a bull in the form of an incredibly muscular man. His metaphor was spot on. For in fact, the bearded man was built like a wild bull. His red eyes, his slightly darker skin tone and his obvious affinity for physical altercations suggested that this was a man who thrived on violence and showmanship. Xavier sighed, he was in no mood for a battle of egos right now. Xavier was very reluctant to carry out this task. It all seemed really boring to him. To engage in a venture that was purely spurned from testosterone didn't excite him in any way. It all seemed pointless to him. No matter how he looked at it, he couldn't see the point behind all this. This was an actual problem because Xavier never did anything without a motive. He wasn't spontaneous. He always had a plan. Right now, he was disgusted by the fact that he was to feature in a face-punching episode. But then again, to go against the system's instruction was complete suicide. Xavier looked at the man carefully and mouthed one word only, fine. There was no trace of emotion on the face of his bearded adversary. It genuinely seemed like he had already made up his mind to arm wrestle with Xavier with or without his permission. The mood was already too tense so Xavier broke the ice with a little joke, take it easy on me all right. Don't go too hard. Glad that Xavier was finally recognizing his superior build, the muscular man also relaxed and leaned into the mood. Don't worry. I will do my possible best not to break your baby arm in the process. Xavier chuckled lightly at the middle-aged man's soft jab. He had expected him to be all macho about it, and his last statement had proven him right. 
this was a battle of egos as much as it was of arms. To further create the illusion that he was actually in awe of his egocentric adversary, Xavier politely made a request, may I have a little time to stretch. The already eager man wasn't pleased with his request. Clearly, he was an impatient man and he couldn't wait to crush Xavier in the presence of his peers. He grunted his approval and backed up a little. Xavier made a showy display of stretching his arms and massaging his muscles. It was ridiculous because he was always in top form. His profession required at the stayed fit 12 months of the year. There was no time to catch a break, he was always training. And because of that, he was always in top form. While he pretended to stretch, he surveyed the man's form and assessed his movements to find out any weak spots in his intimidating form. Clearly he was the bigger man, in stature and in physique. Xavier observed him some more and then came up with the perfect plan. He would ride it out as long as he could and at the same time, wait for the receptionist to fetch his payment. He clenched his fists passive-aggressively and announced his readiness in an indifferent tone, All right, let's do this. Dot. Chapter 7 Thankful you are listening at NovelFull.audio The other punks around cheered their champion on, but not too loudly. For in as much as he was their man, they also feared him. They knew that he could easily switch up on them. So, the punks kept their distance and cheered him on from a reasonable pace. Xavier observed the situation with amusement in his eyes. It was uncanny just how socially awkward these people were. Xavier shifted to a favorable location from which he could both focus on the arm wrestling match, and at the same time, keep an eye out for the receptionist. Xavier's muscular opponent sauntered towards Xavier with a confident stride that was impossible to miss. Boy. Today, I am going to teach you not to go around claiming to be what you're not. He turned his head back to his punks who were still cheering him on. The whole thing seemed comical to Xavier. He felt like he was watching a bunch of kindergartners. It was the same vibe, the same small thinking in the same primitive thoughtlessness. He shook his head and placed his right arm on the table after he had wiped it down. The other man's powerful hands swallowed his relatively smaller hand as the two men locked arms. They stared into each other's eyes, an old tactic that was used by men in arm wrestling. It was a move that was targeted at intimidating the other man by staring him down with his meanest possible look. It was both psychological and physical. Someone in the background began the countdown and both men gripped each other's arms tightly. The final call came and the match began. From the get-go, Xavier knew that his adversary excelled in strength. But knowing it was one thing, it was a whole other thing to be on the receiving end of his brute strength. Like a bear, he bore down on Xavier with the whole of his might. He didn't even bother to hold back. His intent to punish and humiliate Xavier poured into his powerful right hand. His contempt for Xavier, coupled with his pathological need for public approval, further augmented his already brute strength and brought down Xavier's wrist very close to the table. Clearly, he had the advantage. The loud cheering from behind also fueled him on. Yeah. Go get him champ. That's it big guy. Crush him. Break him. Teach the damn liar a lesson. All the chants and encouragements coming from the background encouraged him on like jet fuel to a gulf stream. The bearded man was in his element. He knew it was only a matter of time before he won the match. No one could hold out against him for long. No one, not even this cocky young boy. The contest began to drag out for longer than the bearded fellow had expected, and for the first time, he genuinely began to worry. He had exerted all his energy within the first few minutes and yet, Xavier was still resisting firmly. It was unheard of. No one had ever lasted this long with the muscular man. He began to panic. The voices in the background began to slowly die down as tongues began to wag. Even they were surprised that it was taking their champion this long to put down the younger man's hand. Xavier was very perceptive. He noticed all the signs and knew that although his opponent had an impressive amount of physical strength left, 
his confidence was starting to decline. And consequently, it would end up affecting his hold on Xavier's hand. Xavier had already deduced this. He knew he didn't have to do much. Right now, all he had to do was simply wait out the storm and allow it to ride out. Sooner or later, his opponent would give in to the pressure and cave in. The muscular man saw Xavier's steely gaze and it increased his fears. As the one holding down Xavier's hands, he could feel his unflinching resolve in the younger man's hands. The middle-aged local champion gauged his grip and knew that the boy had an impressive amount of energy still stored up. It was almost as if he could hold on for as long as he wanted. The situation was interesting because the older man had Xavier's hand all the way down, the short distance between Xavier's hand and the table was somehow a problem for him. No matter how much he tried, Xavier's hand refused to budge. He expounded all his strength and yet, he couldn't close the deal. From the outside, he appeared to be the one winning, and yet he was sweating more than Xavier. Then finally, the moment that Xavier had been waiting for finally came. From the corner of his eye, he saw that the receptionist had finally emerged after several minutes in the back room. He didn't know what had taken her so long, but he was glad that she had finally decided to show herself. It was good news to him because it meant that he could finally put an end to this charade. She walked over to his location and gave him the signal that the money was ready. She flashed him two silver coins, and Xavier nodded his acknowledgement. Xavier then shifted his gaze fully on the bearded man sweating profusely before him. The whole sight was indeed a funny one. Dot with a smile on his face, Xavier proceeded to thank the middle-aged man tried his possible best to keep his voice free from sarcasm. It wasn't easy, stranger, I am thankful to you for not breaking my arm. But alas, this contest must come to an end. His adversary wanted to laugh aloud at Xavier's bravado, but unfortunately for him, things moved too quickly, thereby robbing him of his opportunity for a comeback. Xavier tapped into his reserve strength and steadily began to push back his opponent's hand in the other direction. The middle-aged man watched with a look of horror as the tide began to change. Then in one swift motion, Xavier promptly launched his palm with an impressive amount of force that immediately overpowered the other man's hand. The impact of the force was so terrible that the small wooden table which held their hands, was instantly crushed by the residual effect of the force from Xavier's hands. Needless to say, the muscular man's wrist was not spared, the force from Xavier's hand completely destroyed not just his wrist, but shattered his entire right arm. The middle-aged man let out a chilling scream that paralyzed the very atmosphere. For a while, everywhere was quiet. The punks were dumbfounded. Completely flabbergasted, their confusion rendered them mute. They were completely lost for words or actions. Their champion was rolling on the ground and wailing in agony like a schoolgirl who had been whipped. It was a sight that they never thought they would ever see. In fact, the whole outcome of this contest had completely gone in the opposite direction of what they had been expecting. The middle-aged man screamed louder and louder as he wailed and grasped his broken arm. No one made a move to help, heal or comfort him. They all simply stared on as he rolled on the ground shamelessly. His cries filled the space, making everyone extremely uncomfortable. Chapter 8 The Old Man You Are Listening at Novel Full Audio. As usual, Xavier, the man on whom every set of eyes was fixed on in wonder, ignored completely the happenings around him. The same apathetic attitude he had in the beginning manifested as he dusted his arm and made his way towards the waitress to collect his prize. He collected the two silver coins and took a closer look at the coins to make sure that there wasn't any foul play. He held it up to the nearest light source and checked them properly. When he was satisfied, he thanked the waitress. The time and effort he put into observing the coins showed that they were more important to him than the man squealing like a pig behind him. He didn't even as much as glance in the direction of the man he had completely broken. His mission here was done. That was all that mattered to him. It wasn't that he hated the man or harbored any ill will towards him, the fact was that Xavier just did not care. 
the others had been very slow in their reaction. In fact, by Xavier's standards, their recovery rate was abysmal. It had all happened way too quickly for them. First off, the cold and oddly impressive manner with which the stranger had decimated their champion disturbed their simple minds. Their ordinary thought process could not comprehend how an ordinary youth like Xavier could crush the arm of their champion. They didn't know how exactly to respond to the chilling embarrassing cries of the middle-aged man. Xavier took no notice of any of them. He had already gauged the situation as well as the characters in the exchange room, they were all far beneath him. Intellectually, physically, and otherwise. He knew that they had the mentality of an animal herd. They were all comfortable hiding in the anonymity that came with being the member of a gang, consequently, they had real trouble distinguishing themselves as separate individuals. He also took into account their penchant for hostility and knew that they were definitely going to try to make a move on him as one. Primarily because they were cowards, but also because they desperately wanted to punish him for robbing them of the entertainment and drama they had been hoping for. With his mission complete here, and having received no further directives from the system, Xavier dusted himself and headed towards the exit. His stride had the confidence of one who was teeming with self-esteem. Others often mistook this for pride and haughtiness. His sudden departure was the wake-up call they needed. The anger in the whole room swelled like a tide, and like an invisible wave, it rose above the initial shock and engulfed the room like an invisible halo. Xavier smiled as he thought to himself, fine, the clichés must come up at once. They hadn't uttered a word yet, and yet he could almost taste their anger. It charged the air like an electromagnetic force field. He observed them taking formations already as they slowly circled him. Gentlemen, he began in an indifferent tone, I suggest you look to your comrade and ask yourself, do you also want to have your wrist shattered? The question hit home. The same folks, who only a few moments ago had looked so determined to deal with him, now looked hesitant. Xavier caught some of them stealing glances at the middle-aged muscular man who was still reeling in pain on the ground. His cries had reduced to mere whimpering now, but the lesson was still very fresh in the minds of the punks. Xavier wasn't one who typically gave himself to wanton violence, but he was very much a killer. He tried his best to avoid trouble, but when it became unavoidable, he welcomed it with open arms. Right now was one of those times. Like the ominous calm that pervades the seas before a storm, the unsettling quietness that prevailed was just a pointer to the disaster that could potentially break out. Not wanting to make the first move, both sides lingered in an awkward silence. Then suddenly, a figure stepped into the situation and changed the dynamic of the room. This time it wasn't a tall, middle-aged, muscular man that emerged, it was the charismatic figure of an elderly man that was clad in a blue robe. His appearance resembled that of a sage. Xavier watched intently as the old man's arrival completed altered the dynamic of the room. The tension that had been threatening to spiral into an all-dot-out altercation had been nipped at the bud by this strange elderly man. Like a dignified personality, the other stubborn punks made way for him as he passed. He entered the middle of the circle that surrounded Xavier and demanded to know the cause of the ruckus. One of the more chatty ones responded immediately and filled him in on the recent happenings. As an elderly man, he listened and was able to discern the situation. His tufty eyebrows furrowed in deep thought as he looked at Xavier. Xavier noticed that the old man's gaze wasn't as intense as the others. The way he looked at Xavier was suggested the fact that he was looking beyond the physical. It was almost as if he could see into the young man's soul. The old man observed the young stranger carefully and thought to himself, that's strange, he doesn't have a shred of mana in him and yet, there is this horrifying blood.red aura all over him that the old man was well advanced in years and was brimming with knowledge and experience. And yet, nothing he had seen in his lifetime came close to the true sight of the young stranger before him. He was both intrigued and a little disturbed. Not wanting to be thought of as a creep by the stranger, he didn't allow his gaze to linger too long. He looked at the muscular man whom Xavier had destroyed and barked orders at one of the other punks, 
take him to the clinic at once. See to it that he receives proper medical attention. Then, turning to the main subject of fascination in the room, he beckoned Xavier and offered him an invitation in a kind tone, would you mind stepping into my office for a chat? Now Xavier was an extremely distrustful person. His reluctance to follow the old man showed on his face. The perceptive old man smiled and said, Come on son, look around, it's the least you could do after inciting a ruckus here. Xavier wanted to chip in the fact that it was in fact the punk's fault. But he restrained himself from committing himself to an argument with the old man. It was obvious that he wielded an impressive amount of authority here. Also, he seemed reasonable. So Xavier weighed the odds and decided to indulge him, sure. The old man chuckled to himself. He knew the younger man was being cautious. He respected that in a youth. But it also meant that he wasn't going to be easy to read. He had spoken only one word and the old man could tell from his accent that he definitely wasn't from around here. He gestured to the younger man to follow him. Xavier simply nodded and walked behind the old man, but he made sure to keep a decent distance behind him. Chapter 9 Doubt You Are Listening at NovelFull.Audio The old man led Xavier through a series of back doors and hallways as they trudged on in silence. Xavier couldn't help but be wowed by just how elaborate such a seemingly boring structure could be. They glided through halls and took a few more turns before they finally arrived at a great wooden door. The old man produced a key from his robes, and Xavier watched as he effortlessly inserted it into the lock and opened the door. The younger man didn't expect the sight that greeted him on the other side. This case a perfect lesson of the proverb, do not judge a book by its cover. It turned out that the outward appearance of the door was simply a misleading tactic as the office on the inside proved to be much more elegant. The first thing Xavier noticed was the multiple artifacts that were organized neatly all over the office. They varied in sizes, appeal and astonishing aesthetics. There were eye-catching sculptures, a fountain that spilled wine instead of water, a pair of enormous extra-large ivory elephant tusks, crystal balls and a whole bunch of other stuff that Xavier couldn't recognize. They were all laid out at strategic positions. There was also a ton of books arranged beautifully in shelves that ran horizontally from wall to wall. The cushions, exotic rugs and fine furniture also added to the office's appeal. Xavier was surprised. The old man offered him a seat and he himself sat down behind the fine desk in an enormous chair that looked more like a throne. He cleared his throat and introduced himself properly, pardon my discourteousness, I am Caden the proprietor of this establishment known as the Underground Exchange. Xavier was still unsure as to whether he could trust this strange old man or not. He recognized power play when he saw one, and he knew that this whole scene was designed to act as an architectural intimidation. Also, Xavier hadn't missed the fact that he had subtly dropped the fact that he was the owner of this place when he introduced himself. Xavier wasn't entirely sure why he had chosen to bring him here instead of questioning him outside. But he suspected that he had called him down here to interrogate him away from the others, in a place where he felt powerful. With all these deductions, Xavier knew that he couldn't afford to relax around a man like this. He replied the old man curtly and introduced himself as well, making sure to keep his answers short and simple. I am Xavier. Interesting name Xavier. You're not from around here are you? Xavier simply mouthed one word, no. The old man was intrigued by just how cagey the stranger was. His clothes, his accent, his composure and the ridiculous blood dot red mana about him suggested that he was a completely different breed. The old man tried flattery. So Xavier, I learned that you killed a cheetah all by yourself. The old man had dealt with a lot of egocentric youths in his past. From experience, he knew that most young men never shied from espousing their own greatness and glory days. Hoping Xavier would take the bait and expand more, he threw the topic of the cheetah to him. Dot Xavier simply shrugged and grunted. The old man was impressed but he didn't give up there. 
Feigning interest, he encouraged Xavier to tell him more. Well, is it true? Come on, tell me. No need to be modest here. Xavier could usually tell people's angle. But he was finding it extremely difficult to read this old man. Did he want a piece of the cheetah? Or was he simply toying with him? Not completely sure, he towed the cautious path and answered warily, it is true. I killed the cheetah. Wow, that's something isn't it? He leaned forward on the desk and asked his follow-up question, so tell me, how did you do it? Did you set a trap? Was it dying already? Xavier was starting to get irritated with the old man's incessant questions. He answered sharply, I lured it in and killed it. The old man tried and tried but he couldn't get the youth to open up about anything. The old man didn't give a damn about a bloody dead cheetah. He was simply interested in obtaining any information that could explain the terrifying aura around the strange young man. However, no matter how much the old man tried to poke, he couldn't get anything tangible out of Xavier. So, outmaneuvered and outmatched, the old man resorted to something a little bit more direct. Suddenly, out of nowhere, totally unprovoked and with an unnatural quickness, the old man struck out his fist at Xavier's face. Any normal person would have received the blow to their face because it was totally unexpected given the fact that only a few seconds ago, the old man was all smiles and conversational. There had been no warning whatsoever and because of how sudden it was, the tiny window of time to react was very small. But Xavier wasn't just anyone. He very easily countered the punch, not by dodging or by deflection, but he stopped it fully with one hand. He raised his eyebrows questioningly at the old man, and in a very cold voice, he asked him, Old man, just what do you think you are doing? Words couldn't capture Caden's shock. He was completely astounded. Just who is this guy exactly? The way and manner with which Xavier had effortlessly stopped Caden's punch confounded the old man. Xavier's speed was something else. And the way he had calmly executed it was the crowning achievement of it all. Even now, as Xavier held Caden's bald fist in his hand, the old man could feel Xavier's extraordinary strength. Caden was a magician, physical strength wasn't his forte. And yet, because he augmented his punches with magic, it was extremely rare and hard for an ordinary person to escape his punch, talk less of stopping it. The old man smiled a fake smile and answered Xavier's initial question, Don't mind me please. I was just curious about your true strength you know. Trying his best to mask his fear, he continued, I mean, you did claim to have killed a cheetah, and yet, I do not detect any trace of mana in you. Xavier eyed him warily before releasing him arm. Then he replied him coolly, that is a personal matter. It doesn't concern you. Caden noticed that this statement was the longest sentence Xavier had said since they began their conversation. In addition to being a magician and the owner of the underground exchange, Caden was also a diabolical genius. One of his uncanny gifts was that he was adept at discerning people's needs as well as their desires. That was one advantage he discovered that he had in life and he used it shamelessly to get ahead. His shady mind went to work immediately as he assessed Xavier and thought about what his wants were at the moment. Xavier wasn't an easy one to read. People like Xavier were the old man's personal nightmare. He reminded Caden of an impenetrable iron gate. Once Caden couldn't tell what a person wants, he had no power over them. Caden knew he was already at a great disadvantage with Xavier. So, the old man's diabolical mind went hard at work at analyzing Xavier. Chapter 10 Invited Mission You are listening at NovelFull.audio The old man remembered the only detail that he already knew about Xavier. The cheetah. And an idea immediately began to take form in his mind. Got it, he thought to himself, money. Of course it's always money. Caden's reasoning was that Xavier was probably running low on funds. In his head, it was the only thing that would make a master like him descend so low as to kill a low-level cheetah in exchange for payment. So, he asked Xavier a very weird question, pray tell Xavier, as a hunter, 
what rank are you right now? Xavier couldn't discern the true motive of the question. Conversations with the old man were wry and ironic so he could almost never tell where he was going with his questions. Caden mentioned rank and hunter. These things bore no meaning to him. The old man sensed his ignorance in this area and proudly went on to explain things more clearly to him. The term hunter was a generic term that covered everything between poaching wild game and simply killing for sport. This basic truth was known to all. The magician's head bubbled at the mere thought of enlightening the stranger on the topic of hunters. Like an alligator that had sunk its teeth into the flesh of its prey, Caden had gotten hold of a weak link in Xavier's armor and he was going to exploit it to the fullest. Assuming the air of someone who had something important to say, Caden's face suddenly became serious and his tone took a formal approach as he explained the profession and all it entailed. You see, my dear friend, in these parts. He slurred his words and paused from time to time for dramatic effect. Then continued with the skill of a professional orator, hunters are more than just killers. He allowed that piece of information to sink in before continuing in the same serious tone. Dot, some might even consider it an art. Indeed, there's no denying the fact that there's a little bit of an artistic element in it. But I doubt that you are interested in that aspect. He looked at Xavier's perfectly blank expression hoping to gauge his reaction. But there was no hint whatsoever as to what was going on in the stranger's head. Caden might have had much better luck reading a stone statue. Nevertheless, he pressed on. However, for someone like you who isn't art savvy, I believe that the monetary aspect might interest you more. Here, hunters make bank. It is good business. He narrowed his eyes and added subtly. Especially if you are good. There was no doubting Xavier's ability in that regard. He had already proven to be a formidable hunter. The decapitated head of the cheetah he had traded in earlier on was proof enough. He had dropped his intended message there. Even though he had wrapped it in a bow of neat words, he knew that Xavier was sophisticated enough to pick up the underlying message there, Xavier could make serious money if he decided to remain here and hunt for him. Caden was very much still intoxicated by the position of power which he occupied now, so he continued his lecture uninterrupted. But then again my dear Xavier, just as there are several levels of proficiency in other professions, it is very much the same thing among hunters. There is a ranking system that separates the skilled from the non-entities. In total, there are about 14 different stages. At every specific level, all hunter at that stage can accomplish tasks that are assigned to that level. Caden stopped for a minute to all the information marinate in Xavier's mind. It was no coincidence that he had chosen to stop at this very juncture. As a gifted orator and masterful storyteller, Caden could bet his entire fortune that the young man had one question on his mind right now, what level was he on this ranking system? And truthfully, that was the exact question that was running through Xavier's mind at the moment. He was curious as to where his place was on this ranking system. He had no yardstick or reference point by which he could use to measure himself and his skills. No matter how he racked his brain, he must couldn't come up with an objectively logical answer. Caden smiled to himself. Even though the young man had on a perfect poker face, he could tell that he had him hooked. The faraway look in his eyes suggested the fact that his mind was going back and forth as he digested the fresh data that the old man had offloaded on him. Xavier was so wrapped up in his thoughts that he completely forgot about the military system. As if on cue, the system spoke in his mind and answered the nagging question. Major Xavier Mace, please be advised, you are to complete your current task which is a level 6 mission. Xavier blinked. He blinked again. The system always seemed to choose the most interesting times to inform him of his new assignments. Although, this time, it came with an information that would prove beneficial to him at this time. The system had told him that he was going to complete a level 6 task. At least, he didn't have to rely on the old man for this piece of information. So, he announced aloud to Caden that he was almost a level 6 hunter. 
Caden wasn't aware of the fact that Xavier had a military system that issued him directives and forehand knowledge. But as a magician, he suspected that Xavier had access to a higher power. He grinned to himself as Xavier told him that he was almost a level 6. It was working according to his plan. Either way, the old man was determined to have his way. He managed to hide his excitement at Xavier's revelation regarding his level. He was actively trying his best to restrain himself from being too excited. So, he calmly floated his idea across to Xavier while trying his possible best not to appear opportunistic or manipulative. Level 6 huh? That is just perfect. He leaned across the desk and spoke in a pretty patronizing tone, you know, if you're interested, you could hop on a level 6 quest that's active at the moment. He searched Xavier's eyes for any sign of excitement but soon gave up and continued his seduction. It's nothing too flashy really. See there's this band of goblins lurking around in the vicinity nearby. They're real troublemakers and a very unkindly lot. I am not saying you should hunt them all. The main target is their leader. I am inviting you to hunt him down. 